Alright guys, can you see me? Today's video is going to be a little bit different from the usual AutoCAD tutorial videos. I do have a lot more AutoCAD tutorial videos coming up like how to draw a house from scratch all the way up to blueprinting and also submitting a drawing to Parish Council. So yeah, I have all of those coming up, but I just wanted to plug this one in there. This video will be the first in a series that I'll be doing where I will be highlighting or showcasing big up the individuals who have made it to the top of their field in the industrial sector. All right, I think this is important because many of our kids, our students, are, um, I know some of you are watching this right now, like why, why do we have to do this subject? Why do we need all of these subjects? All right. But here are some individuals who have gone through and have made it to the top. You know, they have gone to university, trade school. Some of them may not have gone through any school at all. You know, they just learn informally and still have crossed over, climbed all the mountains and have made it to the top and are now successful. Even if they are not successful, they are on their way. And I think learning from these people can be really inspirational. And uh, in today's video though, we're going to showcase a Jamaican architect who have made it to the top of the mountain and I, I'm sure many of you have seen this video before but I just saw it recently and it was like wow this is wonderful it was inspirational so I hope that you enjoy it let's take a look at it Gordon Gill is a world-renowned architect who has designed some of the world's tallest buildings ranging from the world's first net zero energy skyscraper to the world's tallest tower, Kingdom Tower in Saudi Arabia. Mr. Gill is the patron who will oversee the design of a new parliament building. But do you know he is Jamaican, born and raised? I was born in Kingston and I uh, grew up in St. Anne in Monique. Went to school at a very small school at Reynolds, about five or six kids. And then uh, I went to boarding school when I was about nine at Cartwright College in Mandeville. We left Jamaica when I was 11 and moved to Canada, moved to Toronto. And that's where I did my high school, middle school, high school, undergrad in architecture at Ryerson University. Then went to the States, University of Texas at Arlington and did my first master's. And then I did my second master's, my postgraduate at Harvard. And from there, I have found my way to Chicago and have been there ever since. Both parents all my sisters, all my, bro my, my brothers, two of them are born in Costa Rica, so that's a little bit of a... But yeah, parents, grandparents, all Jamaican, 100%. It's not fair to say that I was interested in architecture necessarily because I didn't know what I was doing when I was a child. I would draw plans and I would make up buildings and I would build things in my parents' backyard on the hillside and cut roads and pour concrete and run water and uh, build cities really and love to make things and then when I uh, went to Canada and I started go taking classes in school they would call it engineering or they would call it architecture and I liked the architecture because it had to do with buildings and I loved buildings so at that point I realized that there's something called architecture and that's what I was doing at least I thought I was doing it, and I became obviously educated over time as to what serious architecture can be. Well, we've been very lucky in the practice. We have designed the world's tallest building in Jeddah, Jeddah Tower, which is currently under construction, over a kilometer in height. We have designed um, cities, over 100,000 people, 50,000 people. They are currently under construction in China. We have probably 23 buildings under construction around the world right now. Last year we had 51. And that was because um, the Expo 2017 in Astana got built and <laughs> completed in 2017. That was 28 buildings as part of a master plan and for the Expo. Um, we've been uh, very fortunate. 
we've been very lucky. And I think a lot of that has to do with our approach to problem solving. When I see a little boy or a little girl um, running on the streets in Jamaica, or I see little kids in Jamaica, it is just my own opinion that little boy or that little girl is capable of the same thing. I don't think it's um, I don't think it's a stretch to expect that the children of Jamaica can grow up to do great things. And I can tell you that in my travels, I've run into a lot of Jamaicans who are doing amazing things out there. And so it is a unique story, I think, because you know I grew up in a I grew up on the top of a hill where I couldn't see another light in the distance at night. But um, I think it's just a story about progression and work and education and um, a certain amount of will and a little bit of luck. I think for Jamaicans this is a very pivotal moment to have the opportunity to participate in or to observe the making of the new parliament building. Uh, that is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I think for anyone in the design field, architectural field, planning, um, disciplines in Jamaica, that has got to be a moment to shine. That is what you live for, I would think. I think that you have a service and a duty, frankly, to your country to put your best foot forward and do the very best that you can, and it's not for yourself. It's not even for the government. <laughs> it's for all those little kids that are going to come by in the future and look at the building and look at the park and look at this place and understand what this meant at this moment in time and what it can mean over the next decades for this country. It is a global opportunity. Um, for the government, I would say about this project, um, think big. I, you, they, you already have the vision to present this as an opportunity to the country and I think that alone is a huge step forward. But I wouldn't stop there. I would demand the very best from your design community and from the country. For the country, I would say embrace this moment, support the process, be constructive and be visionary and don't be afraid of what's possible because I think this is the time when Jamaica will become again recognized not just for all the things that it already is but for architecture and I think that's a critical aspect of this project. I can't wait to see the results. Hashtag or JA Parliament competition led by the Urban Development Corporation. Wow, like that building looks really good, man. Yeah. Yeah, the tallest building in the world. Yeah, that looks really good. Did you see that? Did you see that, that, that thing that you worked on? That, the tallest building? Kingdom Tower? Yeah, that's, that's really beautiful. Um, there are a lot more videos on YouTube with him. I'm gonna link them below. You can check them out. And yeah, yeah, just be inspired. Just be inspired. All right. So I hope you like this one. And if you'd like to see more like it, just smash the like button. And don't forget to subscribe. All right. Let's have a discussion down below. Take care. Big up.